Hello and welcome to His Kingdom Vineyard. My name is Sean Helm. And today, this is an intro to the Covenant series that I'm going to be getting into. Uh, this is just a very brief, uh, this is going to be a very brief podcast. And we're going to get into the Abrahamic, Mosaic, Davidic, and the Bridal. It's going to be a four-part series. And what I want people to understand is a covenant is an alliance or a pact or a treaty, a uh, confederate, testament, and it's literally a contract or an agreement between Yahweh and his people in which Yahweh makes promises to his people and usually requires certain conduct from them. So we're going to be camped out in pretty much uh, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, you know, this is the chapter of the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. And it isn't, the Beatitudes is not a set of rules or regulations. I mean, it's simply a way of life. And when we read the word, many times we need to read the content. Uh, when I read, I read the pre and the post if if I see a scripture, because I want to be able to comprehend it, and I would encourage you to look before and after. And also looking at keywords are sometimes uh, translated in English, and it's not allowing the fullness to be interpreted. And it's it's also important to know the Hebraic customs of that time so to be able to, to sometimes understand what Yeshua is trying to tell us. I have got into many discussions with people. Uh, they say that we don't need to follow the old law. We don't need to follow the Ten Commandments. But I, I would have to disagree. Uh, we do have to follow the Ten Commandments. You know, people say that when Yeshua came, he gave us new commandments. But we're going to get we're going to get into that. So our Father Elohim is the one true Yahweh. He created a standard of righteous conduct that began at the time of Adam and Eve, and it's not changed since. Um, we've got to get out of our Western world mindset. So let's look at the first sin committed by Adam and Eve, and that transgress, ten, transgressed into many of the Ten Commandments by obeying the serpent. So they broke the first commandment in Exodus twenty. And three, you shall have no other gods before me. And that's a lowercase g. So in doing that, they broke the fifth commandment, which is found in Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. In the sense that Adam was created the son of Yahweh, and we can find that in Luke chapter 3, verse 38 which in this chapter is kind of a genealogy, but in verse 38 it says, The son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of, the son of Adam, the son of Yahweh. So their sin also involved stealing, that's the eighth commandment, and they took forbidden fruit that wasn't theirs. Exodus twenty fifteen: you shall not steal. So blaming somebody else instead of taking responsibility for one sin is breaking the ninth commandment, which is Exodus 20 and 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So we find that, excuse me, in Genesis chapter 3, 12 and 13. Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is it you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So Eve lusted for the forbidden fruit and lusting, lusting is coveting, which breaks the 10th commandment. That's found in Exodus 20 and 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. So she was, she wanted something. She was coveting it. So breaking one commandment leads to breaking them all. So let's go to James chapter 2 and 10. So this is what James says. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So Yahweh's laws are interrelated and they are intricately woven together. So if you break one, you're eventually going to break them all. And today, brothers and sisters, we must live in his word and be thankful and the key to finding true happiness is obeying Yahweh's commandments and doing his will, seeking his divine purpose for our lives. And that, that is so important. You will hear me say that often, is seeking the purpose that he created you for. So, Because going deeper into the word, we come to know who he is in his, in, in the Father's character. You know, a lot of times I'll hear uh, people quote 1 John 2.27, 
but they continue to surface read. And let's go let's go to first John two twenty seven and see what that says. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So I'm, I'm not trying to make this sound like a rebuke, but n- not looking deeper into translation uh, from the Hebrew or from the Greek, understanding the context that it was written, it, it's it's not being a Bible scholar, but to know the Father on a more intimate level. And the only way to know his character is to know his word. And and that also means uh, even, <clears throat> even battling against the enemy. You know, when... When Yeshua came out of the desert, the enemy had tried to come at him, and the only way that that Yeshua answered his answers were is with Scripture. So, I mean, his his word is as sharp as a, two, a double-edged sword. So, you know, that means to learn the Hebraic customs, to come into the full understanding, and Messiah Yeshua is the gate. He says, you cannot get to the Father unless you go through me first. So, I mean, that is, that is when we reach it, salvation. But but the anointing that is, it says, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. It's, it's not on you. It, it is in you. And that is that is the Christ. That is the Christ within us. So like I said earlier on, you know, I've heard this new teaching, and many are believing that we don't need to follow or live by the Ten Commandments. Because, you, uh, they, you know, as they say, Yeshua gave us new ones. So let's take a look at, at what he is saying in Matthew Chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Actually, I'm going to back up uh, to verse 36 because <clears throat> the disciples are asking, it says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Yeshua said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So these these were not new at all because Yeshua, he actually quoted Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18, and these are in the Torah, the law. And, And they are also the first law of mention. I like to go back to the first law of mention if it's mentioned in the Torah because, like I say, if we know the Torah and we know you know, the, the Hebraic customs and things like that, then that's when we come into the fullness and we start understanding and learning what Yeshua says in, in a lot of these because he does quote a lot of things back in the Old Testament. So let's go check out the first laws of mention. One of them is found in Deuteronomy 6.5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So today we know that we are not under our own strength, that we are under the strength of Yeshua. So so the difference between that translation is uh, strength was in the Old Testament and mind is in the New, and we are to renew our mind. It's a renewing of the mind. So in Leviticus chapter 19 and 18, this is uh, the quoting that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, in verse 18 in the 19th chapter of Leviticus, it says, You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Elohim. So like I said earlier on in one of my other podcasts, you know, I, I, I use a lot of scripture because, you know, a lot of scripture is like playing dot to dot. I mean, you can, you know, this ties in with this and this ties in with that. So, so enabled for us to, I mean, it, it is able for us to understand and come into the fullness of the meanings. So let's look at Matthew ch- chapter 23 and verse 23. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So what Yeshua was saying is neglecting the more important matters of the law. And Yeshua criticizes the religious leaders for paying meticulous attention to the tiny details uh, while disregarding the law's true heart. And if we can take a look at verse 16, back back in chapter 
uh, 22 of Matthew, verse 16. It says, And they sent him to their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of Yahweh in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. So here is addressing the Herodians, which was a Jewish uh, party, and that sympathized with the rulers of the Herodian dynasty, and and therefore Rome. And they are depicted as allied with the Pharisees against Yeshua. So in Matthew... 22 <clears throat> verses 30 through through 40 i'm not going to read the whole thing i, I read some of it earlier it, and it's the pharisees again trying to discredit yeshua and, and this time with a legal question and anytime they would do this it also points back to the torah and we can find that in leviticus chapter 5 verse 1 i also taught that in the melchizedek teaching and Caiaphas also did this with Yeshua in the temple. And it says, if a person sins in hearing the utterance of an oath and is a witness, whether he has seen or known of the matter, if he does not tell it, he bears guilt. So basically they put him under an oath. So let's go to, let's go to Joshua chapter one, verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so once again this is this is something that i've heard quoted uh from from a lot of different people uh you know even in ministry so it, see that's what i'm saying we get we pick and choose what we want to believe what we don't want to believe what we can use today you know it, you know, like this goes back to oh we don't have to follow the law anymore well but we're using the scripture and we're trying to apply it in our life but yet we don't use it so this can be confusing to a new believer but today i'm hoping that you know this kind of brings to more light of what we are to do and what we shouldn't do, what, what we don't have to do, you know, as far as the law goes. And we're going to get more into that as, you know, just a little bit later in this teaching. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse 17. It says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. So what did Yeshua mean here? Well, let's keep reading. So in verse 18, it says, For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will not by, will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you keep reading, Yeshua is even, he even brings up a few of the commandments. He says in verse 21, he says, you have heard that it is said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool will be in danger of hellfire. So so really, he, I mean, he was just showing the importance. I believe that he was pointing back to that we still need to follow these commandments. And in verse 18, you know, all the law was important to Yeshua. And then in verse 20, it surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And these were groups that were associated with a high degree of righteousness. And and this should be, um, I mean, should not be considered an endorsement of the scribes or the teachers of the law. Instead, Yeshua points out that not even righteousness is enough to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And some of the scribes and the Pharisees were, they were externally righteous, 
but they failed to in, internalize the heart of the law. And Yeshua criticizes this attitude in Matthew chapter 23. And we're not, I'm not going to get into Matthew uh, chapter 23, but we'll go to Matthew 5, 21 through 48. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I, I'm just going to really just give a description of what 21 through 48 is saying. So Yeshua presents the antithesis, which means a contrast or opposition between the two things. And to make a point, and I love when he makes this illustration like this, and, and what it means to have a righteousness that surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees. The righteousness required of Yeshua's disciples goes beyond the observation of the written law. So we can take note that Yeshua's teaching here does not overturn the existing Jewish law. It supplements or elaborates its teachings with the principles for living the ethics of the kingdom of heaven. So I do want to point out in verse 48, it says, Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So we are to strive to be in perfection and to, you know, when we understand and know his character, we are to live out his character in this place. And I was going to do Yeshua's fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, but I just want to encourage you to do it on your own. I mean, there are a lot of things uh, that point out the, you know, the prophecies that were fulfilled, you know, with Yeshua. And, you know, you can look that up on the Internet. And like I said, I was going to do it, but there is just too long for me to do it in this teaching. And this teaching really is just a introduction to the covenants, which we're about to, to learn about. So I just I find it interesting that some will follow the laws but ignore others. And they, people pick and choose what suits their lifestyle. So I'm going to show that there are three different types of laws of the Old Testament. There, there are civil, which Yeshua emerged from this nation of Israel, but he started a, a new Israel, and that's a spiritual Israel, and that's the church. So we're no longer bound by the civil codes of Leviticus because Yahweh doesn't have a nation state on earth earth anymore. Then we can take a look at the ceremonial laws. And as the book of Hebrews shows us, the sacrifices were all fulfilled in Yeshua's perfect life and death. If we accept Yeshua, the ultimate sacrifice, we, we don't need a lesser sacrifice anymore. His sacrifice on the cross is sufficient. But I want to take a look at the final one, and that is the moral laws. And they reflect Yahweh's character. And since his character doesn't change, his views on morality don't either. In fact, when Yeshua mentioned the moral laws, he either reaffirmed them or intensified them. And to follow Yeshua is to love what he loved, including the moral law. So as followers, we keep the moral commands. Not because it's law, but because we love the Father and want to be like Him. So this is leading into the covenants, the Abrahamic, the Mosaic, the Davidic, and the bridal. And this was just an intro. So since we've been kind of parked in the book of Matthew in 5, let's look at verse 13 and go into the meaning of a covenant that points back to another first law of mention found in Leviticus chapter 1 and 13. And this is connected to a covenant. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So let's go back to the first law of mention, which is found in Leviticus chapter 2 and 13. And every offering of your grain offering shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your Yahweh to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. So this was kind of a study that I did. I thought it was very interesting about the salt and, and how Yeshua said it. So uh, this was a tradition that was made with friends uh, for, a, for life, which was a salt covenant. For, so example, if there were five friends that wanted to make a covenant, each one of them would bring a salt pouch and pour each one into a bowl, and they would mix it up so each one's salt were mixed as one. And they would break bread together, and they would dip it in oil and into the salt and eat it. And that would be a lifelong covenant of friends. So I'm, I'm so excited about this covenant 
and this four part series because it really just it really shows the type of shadow or pattern that is to come, you know, in the new and even even into today that we can utilize in our life. And I'm so excited to share this with you. Uh, a lot of interesting things. You know, I've been studying on these covenants for for quite a while and, and just putting this whole series together. So we're going to do one by one. We'll do we'll first start out with the Abrahamic covenant and I'll, I'll teach them the meaning of that and then the mosaic and then the Davidic and then the bridal. So father, I just thank you for this, for this teaching father. I thank you uh, for your covenant, the covenant that you've made with us as your children. And father, I just ask that you will open up the eyes and the ears father, that you will give them new revelation father, that, that the catapult them ahead and that my ceiling may be their floor. Father, and just just ask for for peace uh, that you will, like your word says, that we do not need man to teach us, Father. But they just ask that the anointing that is in them, Father, that that you will give them new revelation, and you speak to them that they will hear you. And Father, I just I just thank you for this new thing that you are doing, this new remnant that you are raising up, Father, that you raise up in every generation. Father, I just thank you for all my brothers and sisters that are warriors for your kingdom and that you will continue to teach us more about you and your character. And Father, I just ask all this in Yeshua's name. Amen. So I look forward to doing this. I'm going to start on Monday. I will do the very first one, which will be the Abrahamic Covenant. And I'm just really excited about this. I would ask just for your feedback. You know, if you have any other questions on any of my podcast, you know, if you feel free, you can leave a comment and I will get back to you. Uh, I just really hope that you guys are enjoying this and, and this is filling you up and, and bringing you further into relationship and also uh, going, you know, I don't know where some of you are, but just bringing you up into, you know, leaving the elementary principles behind let's let's go into more more of a deeper relationship with him so i just pray blessing over you i thank you for listening for tuning in and look forward to hearing some of your comments